Here in part three, we'll set our sewing machine up for webbing. There's five things you'll need to figure out on your own, because while I can show you how to do them on my machine, these steps may be different on yours. Those five things are how to wind a bobbin on your machine, which way the needle goes into your machine, how to thread your machine, how to adjust the upper tension, and how to adjust the lower tension, which is also called the bobbin tension. Consult your machine's manual, and if it didn't come with one, you've got some googling and detective work ahead of you. Let's do a test before we thread the machine. Set the stitch length on maximum, insert the needle with the correct orientation, place two layers of webbing under the presser foot. Drop the presser foot down to clamp the webbing in place. Now the trick is, we're not going to use the sewing machine's motor, so you don't even have to plug it in, unless you need the lamp. What we're going to do is hand crank the machine, which allows us to manually control the speed and even, to a degree, the power. A weaker sewing machine motor may not pierce two layers of webbing, but we can if we hand crank it. So start turning the crank. With most machines, you need to turn it counterclockwise, check your manual, and never turn the hand wheel in the wrong direction or you'll lock the threads up inside the machine. Now as you can see, the needle is piercing both layers and the webbing is advancing between needle strokes. Don't ever force the material to advance using your own fingers. That's how you break a needle and possibly damage your machine. You have to let these things, which are called the feed dogs, move the material. The machine does all the advancing, you just guide the material to make sure that it's not going crooked. Now we're ready to do some test stitching. Thread your machine, making sure the thread goes through the needle in whichever direction your manual specifies because it only works in one direction. Don't forget to pull the bobbin thread up. Here, I've removed the presser foot for visual clarity. Set the stitch length to maximum, put two layers of webbing under the presser foot, drop the presser foot, and begin cranking to lay down a short line of stitches. Then let's remove the material to inspect it. Whenever you remove material, turn the hand wheel to make sure that the needle is in the up position and that the take-up lever, which is this thing, is just past the topmost part of its travel. Otherwise, the threads can get locked inside the machine and you won't be able to remove your material. Now look at the top and the bottom of your material. It should look like this, where the stitching looks like a line of dashes on both top and bottom. But some of you may end up getting what looks like this on the bottom. Look closely. You see how the dashes have these little dots of thread between them? That means the upper tension is too loose. So tighten it up just a little, then do another line of test stitching and inspect it. Rinse and repeat, incrementally tightening your tension until the stitches look balanced top and bottom. Now if you tighten your upper tension all the way and are still getting the dots on the bottom, you may need to start incrementally loosening your lower tension. Once you've got that right and the stitches are balanced, we'll be ready to move on to turns. Now folks, I know this tutorial seems like it's taking forever, but I'm trying to go through this step by step so that you don't encounter the frustrations that I had when I first tried this and had no idea what I was doing. I guess I just... I just don't want you to make the same mistakes I made, and if that makes me a bad parent, then... We're almost there, folks. In the next video, we'll learn the crucial stitching technique you need to make this all start coming together. I'm Rain No for Core 7 7 TV. Say thanks for watching. Say thanks for watching or you're fired. I'm Rain Nova, Core 77 TV. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.